I'm Amber Davis and this is your five minute call. This is the space where musical theatre takes centre stage. From unforgettable backstage stories with incredible special guests to insights from my life and my theatre journey. We're leaving it all on the mic every single week so let's jump in. Today on the podcast, we have our first male star. He won at the television show, Mamma Mia, I Have a Dream, and I am honoured to have him on this sofa. It's Tobias Turley. Hello, listeners. Welcome back to your five-minute call. Now, when we put up a box on Instagram asking what guests would you like on our show, we had one name come up quite a few times, and he is sitting, he is sitting right next to me now. It's Tobias Till. Hello. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. I'm very good. That's good. so nice that people want to see me. That's I, crazy. I know. Well, and you are the first male guest. Oh, it's an honour. So welcome. Thank you very much. Now, I know you've done the research on the show. Mm-hmm. Firstly, who has, be, who has been your favourite guest on the podcast so far? I mean, they've all been great. But for me, it was Lucy Jones so far because... I think in that episode, she was talking about so many things about, you know, about her experience on Eurovision or X Factor, where when I was doing my show, I kind of felt similar things. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, I've thought that or I've said that exact thing. And it was it was nice to see someone of her stature. That's Lucy Jones. She's She's amazing. Yeah. Um, Someone like her saying the same things and how she dealt with it. So that was actually really nice to listen to and go, you know what? I wasn't going crazy. I was. Yeah, you know, that's everyone just how it goes, feels I guess. the same. Yeah. Firstly, I want to ask is what is your pre-show ritual mm-hmm. as Sky? Well, for myself, it's a very boring answer. Okay. I generally just brush my teeth. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is such a good one. And then I head on out. That's my personal one because I get ready so late. Do I think you? I go down to my room at the five minute call. Oh. Um, look at that. I normally hang around with the boys in their dressing room, just chatting and playing Mario Kart sometimes <laughs> until like the five and then I'll go down and get ready. But as a cast, there's one where um, during the overture, like one of the final songs in the overture is, it's like leading up to Mamma Mia and there's just like a little dum, 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 dum. And then everyone comes together and we're like, we'll clap. Huddle. Sorry, that's probably really loud on the mic. <laughs> um, everyone does like a little... Boom, boom, little two claps, and then that's it, and then everyone goes on their way, and it's it's really lovely because you love just that. see faces briefly, and you're like hello, hello, and the next time I see them, it's like during money, money. So it's um, like a, a moment for you guys as a cast to check in. Yeah, it's like everyone on like the bottom floor and the first floor kind of come down, and then everyone else comes down when they're called. But yeah, it's just a really nice little moment because maybe after warm up you don't see everyone, and you go hello, have a good show. Yeah, how are you? You're all right, yeah, I'm all right. And then, and then you clap, and your there. personal one is to brush your teeth. Brush my teeth. That's really good though, because you play Sky, which is obviously mm-hmm. opposite Soph. Yeah. So at least we know that your breath smells good. Well, that's <laughs> one thing. I get really <laughs> conscious about smells. Same. Like I'm I, the, same. the idea of smelling bad is Hell. horrible to me. <laughs> yeah. So I'll brush my teeth, have a little spray, and then I'll go. So if anybody goes to watch Mamma Mia, when you're looking at Tobias on stage, you could be like, I know. And you wonder, what's that lovely smell? (laughs) It smells so good. It's Toby. (laughs) Me. Okay, right. You've had an insane journey. Mm -hmm. Insane. And obviously, I can relate on some level, Mm -hmm. although the reality show I went on was completely different Mm -hmm. to yours. Yours was about talent and about playing Sky. Firstly, what made you go on the show? Well, it's it's weird because I was always a little bit tentative at first to apply because I th- I always thought like you know so many people are going to apply to this and why would it ever be me and yeah. I don't know like there was always some doubts but I thought you know what if you don't buy a ticket you don't win the raffle so might as well apply and the first round was like I just send in a video talking about myself and like what my hobbies were and what I do outside of this and then you know you go into the room and you do a few songs and whatever but yeah I was I thought it's such an amazing opportunity yeah. that it's going to be hard to pass it by because also I grew up watching those shows I remember yeah. the Joseph one so vividly and then me and my mum went to watch Lee Mead at the Palladium 
So it's like a full circle moment for you. It was a little bit, yeah. And I thought, you know what? This doesn't happen all oh. the time. So let's just give it a go. Did you ever think, like during those first stages, I could actually win this? No. Never. No, 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 no. I think even during the auditions, I never quite realized how far into the process I was going because I, I, I don't know. I just, I guess I just turned up, did the best I could and then left and then. But the best you could do was winning material. Like, <laughs> you were my winner from the get go. Oh, thank you. Like, I just thought you've got what, it, you've got that star quality. Oh, thank you. That's really you kind. Feel it through the television. Oh, you know? stop it. That's so nice. <laughs> um, yeah, it was the best thing ever. And even now I pinch myself. I'm like. I actually won that. That was really weird. I know. I think that sometimes. I think I actually won Love Island. Yeah. That's crazy. Like it doesn't feel like it's mental, me. Isn't it? You know. I think it gets to the point where every now and again, I, people at stage door go, "What's your intro?" I go, "Oh, thank you so much," and I kind of glaze over it a little bit. But when I sit and think about it, I'm like, oh, yeah. "I did that. That was really cool." Yeah. Go me. I'm like an amazing story to tell the grandchildren. Yeah. In the future. Mm -hmm. What were the highlights of the experience? Because obviously you went out there. Mm -hmm. Where did you guys film again? Corfu. Corfu. And how long were you out there for? So it depends. So I, me and the finalists were out there for about 32 days. Okay, gorgeous and town. And then it was beautiful. <laughs> and then obviously like if people got eliminated, they got shipped off the next day, which was awful to see them go. But Were you like family? Yeah, it's that like that genuinely is my answer. Like the best thing was the people. It's really quite odd how well we all got on. Mm. Considering you're all up against each other. Yeah, because it, uh, it didn't feel like a competition. You kind of forget that one of us is going home and you just want, yeah. it, you know, when whoever was going up to sing, you just wanted to do well. Yeah. Because you love them. So. Did you know, because obviously Stevie won with you. Mm -hmm. Did you think she'll win it with me? Or did you have a front runner for Sophie? I didn't. No, I think, again, it all comes back to that. Right? I got on well, so well with Esme and Stevie that... I didn't want to think about who was going to win it. We yeah. were kind of just doing it. And then whoever won, won, you know. Yeah. But I'm having a blast doing it with Stevie. She is so funny. And God. she is so energetic and bubbly. Like, she, she's great. So we, I'm very happy. She, she's another person that we've had um, requested to come on the show. So I will be seeing if she'd like to come and have a chat. Getting in contact. <laughs> what I'd love to know is the judging. Mm -hmm. Who is your favorite judge? Be real. I will. We want an exclusive on your five minute call. Mm, this is tough, <laughs> actually. Um, I can see the clocks turning. Yeah. Am I going to get in trouble? <laughs> what do I say? All of, no. Um, <laughs> I think my favorite was Alan Carr. Okay. Why? For a couple of reasons. He is exactly the same on screen as he is off. Like, he is hilarious. And he is nonstop. So he was really lovely. And he was also someone like, he's a massive celebrity. Like, yeah, he's a big deal. That's crazy. And so I never thought I'd get to meet him. And Meeting and him did he lovely. give you the time of day off camera? Yeah. I love, yeah, big time. for me, it's people like that you remember. Yeah, and I think maybe that's why that's my answer, because he was so lovely. Like, he came to our opening night as well, and I bumped into him at Cirque du Soleil, and he was, like, genuinely so happy to see me. And I was like, you're just lovely. Yeah. You're a ball of sunshine. Um. I love that. I have worked with him before many a years ago and I remember thinking, you're a legend. Yeah, he was so He's sweet. Star. Nice dude. I love that. Quickly, before we move on and get into all the juicy gossip about training in Guildford, mm -hmm. playing Kurt in Heathers, I just want to say, I, I feel like you're quite a competitive person. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I also feel like you're a bit of a sore loser. Big time. Because I have... Oh, no. evidence of this <laughs> so oh, just no. for some context for our listeners mama mia have a football team <laughs> they play against back to the future this is horrible on many occasions now i have footage here and i'll show you guys <laughs> look at this of you. So Ben scores a goal and this is you. I crumble to the floor. The floor. <laughs> you are one sore loser. So Ben shoots his shot and this oh, is you. God. Falls to the floor, guys. This is the Worst evidence. Worst day of my life. This is... 
swears on the floor. Okay, Can you right. See it? This is foul. Ben Joyce, my Unfair. boyfriend, scored a goal, and you just couldn't hack it. I can't you? believe you've done this to me. <laughs> I cannot believe when, you've done this. When Ben sent me this video this morning, I thought, oh my gosh, this is absolutely. Ben, you've stitched me right up here. <laughs> But how amazing is that, that Mamma Mia come together? I think it's once a week, don't you? Every Friday, yeah. Every Friday they come together. Mamma Mia play against Back to the Future. And I I don't want to, like, dig the knife in deeper, but I'm pretty sure you've lost don't every you game. Dare. Don't you dare. <laughs> so, Mamma Mia football It's team. not about the winning. It's about the taking part, really. And it's, it's about all about the, the exercise. exercise. <laughs> the <laughs> Keeping fit for those eight shows a week. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, the show after that is hard. I know, Ben Stumbling said Stumbling around the theatre. <laughs> ben <laughs> wakes up on a Saturday morning ready for a double and he cannot walk. You can tell we've all played on a Friday <laughs> night because the, the sh- everyone's walking around like warm up like, oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> warm up's a lot less stressful on that day. I love that, but that is the type of stuff that happens off stage in the West yeah. End. We also have, have you done the bowling? No, but I've heard a lot about the bowling and I'm... Yeah, West so. End bowling. It is a thing, and we all go against each other. Frozen, Matilda, Mamma Mia. I love this. Everyone goes up against each other, and it's a real big deal, you know. Amazing. <laughs> okay, so moving on. You trained at Guildford. I did. How old were you when you trained? So I I just turned 18 when I went. So I went in 2018. I graduated in 21. So I was 21 when I graduated. And did you train during the pandemic big time oh wow yeah. please tell me a little bit about that it, so we got shut down halfway through my second year and then the the rest of my second year was online and then the entirety of my third year was online oh, no. which was crazy at gsa you do in your third year you do five shows and sorry we did four shows okay the first three were all online and filmed with like a cctv camera and so that makes me so sad you know because it was really hard in the moment. Do you feel like you got robbed? I know there was nothing that anyone could have done about it, but yeah. do you feel like you got robbed of your training experience? I think it's weird because I think at first, yes. And I was like, oh, this is my three years ruined. But I think GSA did really well to adapt. Yeah. Like Obviously, it's not the same doing it online at all. It's not because I lived in a house with five other guys okay. in my year we're all trying to do ballet on a Wednesday morning. <laughs> it's not kitchen. going on. It's not happening. Like, <laughs> it's not going well because everyone's using, like, the fridge as their ballet bar. And <laughs> it's, <laughs> oh, God. it's absolute carnage. I um, feel like if you don't laugh about it, you'd cry about it. Yeah. And what did your parents think? You know, I actually don't know. Because I stayed in Guildford the entire time. Did you? Yeah, I just, I thought living with my five friends at Guildford would be easier than going home. Because I thought yeah. if I went home, then I'd be like, oh, well. Reality would hit a little yeah. bit. I just feel like to anyone who was in drama school during that period in our lives, like hats off to you guys. Thank because you. Because training is difficult, even yeah. being there in person, you know, and you guys had to go through all of that online. And I feel like, do you think opportunities were lost by graduates because of that? Yeah, I do. I think... Like you say, it was a really tough time to train and I definitely didn't come out with the three years of training I would have done without a pandemic. And I think also in that period, like the year above me graduated into a pandemic because there was no jobs going. Yeah, they, they so were like, the that was tough yeah. for them. Like there was probably, I mean, I'm not too sure about this, but maybe like just under a year where like there was nothing going on. I think p- things only started picking up when I was graduating, like a year later. So... Yeah, they definitely had it hard just graduating into nothing and not yeah. knowing if this industry was going to pick up again. Because yeah. there was always that, like, is theatre going to return? I know. And it has, baby, it has. It but, has. We've um, got a leading man here to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it was just a tough time all round. And whoever graduated during the pandemic. Hats off to you. a bad bitch. On a, yeah. Hats off to you. It's hard. It's really, really hard. Mm. Now, your first job mm-hmm. was Heather's. Well, I did a pantomime as my first job. Oh, so panto. Yeah. Where, again? Sleeping sorry. Beauty in Mansfield. I wasn't Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> I was 
Prince Charming it was actually. So your first experience of a professional gig was Panto and that is the t- first gig mm. you could go into because you do three show days don't you? yeah there was a couple three show days but it was mainly two a day yeah and how you know getting thrown into that from a pandemic mm. that not was for the week is it no i had a great time doing that panto though because it was like my first experience in the world and i was like oh i'm actually doing it this is great i had a lovely cast i got to sing some great songs i got to sing some queen oh got to sing some bts I sang a song from really? Jamie. It was like the opening of Act Two. Yeah, it was really I, fun. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Would you would you do a panto? Absolutely. Again? Absolutely. Pantos are so fun. Good and they're movie. like really yeah. good. Yeah. And I think some people like look down on pantos and I don't get it because they're so fun and I know. they're like you just have a blast and it's It's a short contract, great money, and you can put it on your C V. Yeah. What's so not I, to love? What what's there not to love? And then it said on Wikipedia that you did the Nutcracker. Yeah, Birmingham, Birmingham World Ballet, yeah. That's insane. And Don't you graduated in 21 and you've done <clears throat> all of this. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to put it out there now. I wasn't a ballerina <laughs> in the Nutcracker. Oh, that's a great shame. I was Imagine. looking forward to that footage. I know. I could have left that out, but I no. thought I could see you doing like... I do have some Triple good photos. Pir- the costumes pirouettes. were hilarious. Please show us. Let me, let me get one some. up, please. Okay, here wanna, we go. <laughs> the viewers want to see you in a leotard. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I believe my first character was homeless Russian. Um, <laughs> this was terrifying baby. <laughs> no, no, no. So That's did you good. love? Did you love doing the Nutcracker? I had a great time. It was something I never thought I'd do. You know, I wasn't on your to, like no, to do list. It wasn't on my radar at all. And then it kind of came about and me and some of the other guys I went to drama school with were like, yeah, let's do it. And we did. And we got to spend Christmas in London. And, you know, like it was at the Royal Albert Hall, which was just Iconic. so cool. Not many people can say that, you know. No, it was really awesome. And it, this was actually just before everything like COVID came around. So yeah. this was still like pre all of that. And we were all happy. That's being... amazing. And that just shows like when opportunities come your way and it's not really you know, on your to-do list. Don't shut the door on on, Absolutely. on those things. Yeah, like I, I will probably never get the opportunity to do that again. No. And yeah, it was just great. You've I ticked I it off. Get the world the world of ballet is insane. Now it's time for a quick interval. Go and powder your noses and we'll see you in two. West Side Story, talk yes. to me. That was one of my favorite jobs to date. Really? Like that was one of my dream shows as well. And I think for the majority of boys who like a bit of dance, it's one of those shows. Yeah. You know, um, I got the audition when I was on tour and I couldn't make it. And I said to my agent, I was like, can we really push that I can tape or something? Because like, yeah. this is something I'd really love to do. And luckily we managed to get a tape and I sent off a singing round. And then I, I put together a dance reel of stuff I was doing on the Giovanni tour. And then they came back and they were like, this is good. Can you do Jet Song for us? We had to do Jet Song as a monologue. No. And then do Jet Song as the song. Oh. Um, that so that was funny. That makes me feel physically sick when they ask us to do things like that. Looking back, it was wild. I've still got the self-tapes on my phone. And I watch it every now and again, every time I scroll. You know, like when you're in the tube and there's no Wi-Fi and you're like, I'm just going to go through my Scrub, photos. Yeah. Um, that's when I listen to quite a bit. Um, it's just Do you think so West Side funny. Story is one of the highlights of your career so far? I think personally, yes, because I just adored that show and i have for so long and like we did it outdoors on this 30 meter stage and the choreography was just insane and the people were lovely Uh, the guy who played tony i will never forget him singing maria to this day his name's adam felipe and he's an absolute legend um i love that he i i remember hearing him sing that in Sits Pro for the first time and just going. I love what? that. It was great. Like sharing the stage with people that inspire you and make you more motivated. I learned so much from that job mm-hmm. just from the people I was around. Yeah. It was crazy. So what would you say so far is your highlight? I know you won. A I think- ITV team on me, I've got a dream show. But is that the peak of your career or? Yeah, I think, I genuinely think it is. That's epic. Do you- it, yeah, it's. It's so weird. <laughs> I know. Um, 
it, it, yeah, I think that's definitely the peak just because of the scale of it for one, I think. And the experience I got to do yeah. through it. Like, I got to do so many amazing things on that show. So, yeah. And I think like it opens so many doors for you, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Like I obviously follow you on Instagram and I see that the opportunities that are coming your way is endless. Never once did I think I'd be sat opposite Amber Davis and <laughs> I'd be doing a podcast. So thank <laughs> you so much for having me, especially with the people that have been before me. Whoa. Babes, you, you were wanted. That, yeah, I, again. I wanted you wild. on. I, well, you've, you. you've experienced something that no one on this earth will experience. There was a handful of you. Yeah. And only you can tell that story. Thank you. That's wild, you know. It's really lovely. It's an honour to be here. So thank you. Do you know what I found? Which I've got to say is absolutely magnificent. Thank I saw it on your Instagram earlier. You are a rising star of 2024 in Hello Magazine. I am, yeah. Do you know how mega that is? Yeah, that, again... Pinch me moment. Yeah. Like, why me? Oh, <laughs> do you know what? I actually like that you said that because it just shows how friggin' nice you are and how humble you are. Thank but you. how old are you? 23. You're 23 and yeah. you've lived a life already that only people can dream of. Yeah, I really am living the dream and it's the craziest thing ever and it's the best thing ever. Yeah. And <laughs> I just don't understand it. It's so weird. If you hadn't have done, like everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. You were meant to do that show. You're meant to be leading on the West End right now. You know, how how does it feel being a leading man at the age of 23? It feels great. It feels really great. And feel pressure? I did when I started. Mm. Yeah, when we first opened, I remember speaking... Stevie and I think it was some of the other guys in the cast as well there was like a certain day and I was like you know what? I'm really feeling the pressure today and I think something happened on social media and I got a load of messages about the show and something and I kind of sat there and I was like you know what so many people are messaging me about coming to see the show and so many people have watched the TV show and voted and I was sat there and I was like now we have to actually go and do it and like, mm-hmm. I know that's what we're trained in and we can do it absolutely yeah. we can do it but I just felt there was so much pressure to do it well and yeah. not let the people who voted for me down so there was, yeah, I felt that. And then after about a week, I was like, I'm settled in. Yeah. We're fine. We're it's locked a job in now. now. Yeah. <clears throat> That's so amazing. You know, when it comes to, because obviously you're in this contract now for six months, is it? Or a year? Uh, it's eight months total. So to October 5th. Do you have, because I know a lot of people when they first come into the West End or tour or a contract, they can have performance anxiety, mm-hmm. as in worried about their voice or like, but, off camera, you just said to me that you were out on Saturday night, and I love that <laughs> because <laughs> because people right me out. <laughs> he was in freedom. Some people, this job consumes their yeah. life, and they will not go out. They will not do anything yeah. out, out of the ordinary because they want to be healthy. Like, what's your mindset when it comes to that? I tell you, what, it's changed over time. Like when I did the Strictly tour, I was very much like, I don't want to go out. I don't want to eat dairy i don't want to whatever because that <laughs> Which was is a, a myth that was a tough thing big old myth that was a really tough thing okay so i'd be careful obviously we went out like on people's birthdays and stuff but i would try my best to be good but i think you know like your voice changes a lot when you leave drama school and i've learned way more since leaving drama school i think than i have oh, 100%. whatever and then you know my voice has changed or i've changed or whatever and so i think now i'm at a point where no i'm just like my technique is there I can do it. It's locked in my body now. Yeah. I don't have to worry about what I'm eating or. Yeah. Obviously, I'll, I'll get my eight hours sleep and I'm not going to be in freedom every and night. Hydrate and hydrate. Yeah. I'm going to do the things you don't let it I need to do, you. but I'm not going to run my life around making sure I drink three liters of water a day and yes, get my 10,000 steps in. It's so good that you're getting this mindset at such a young age because you will thoroughly enjoy your career mm-hmm. going into it like. So much less stressful. We do not need to stress as mm-hmm. much. I think it's, it's one of those things where like, we put the work in to do the show and we know how we do the show and how to do it to a very good level. Once you're there, as long as you don't dip underneath it yeah. and you're given a good show every night, then there's no need to stress yourself out about it. Yeah. And whilst I've got you here, I really want to ask you, what's it like working with Maz Murray? <laughs> <sighs> Maz Murray <laughs> is... As I live and breathe, <laughs> she is incredible. She is one, the nicest person I've ever met. Yeah. Two, the most talented person I've ever met. She's so lovely. 
I came to watch the show last year before you were in mm-hmm. it, and it got to the winner takes it all. Oh. And I, I, my jaw was on the floor. Yeah. The entire song. Without fail, whether we have <clears throat> like a Monday night audience, which is still a bit like they're a bit tame, quieter, a bit quieter, or whether it's a Saturday night audience, without fail, there will be like a massive rupturous applause after when it takes it all. Yeah. Is she just like consistent? Cut completely. Like her sh- Monday night show is exactly the same as a Saturday matinee, as a Saturday evening. She is. The poster girl for yeah. consistency. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And I feel like when I came to watch and I watched her, and don't get me wrong, the whole show, like I am an ABBA super fan. Mm-hmm. So the show is right up my street. But when she'd come on stage and performed, it made me like fall in love with performing all over again. Yeah. I was like, I cannot wait to get back on stage. I remember when I did my show watch uh, after the first day of rehearsals. I messaged her after the show. I was like, what have I just watched? <laughs> I was like, that was insane. <laughs> it's just... She's a different, like... Breed. Yeah, she is. Yeah. I feel like she's so old school musical theatre that when you see that live in action, it's like breathtaking. Yeah. Yeah, did yeah, you yeah. see, so on the, that same note, did you see Sunset Boulevard? I did. Oh. And I'm really upset that I didn't... You missed big in there i know don't get me started i'm not happy i'm not happy about it because i feel like the the feeling that maz gave me was the feeling that nicole gave me oh, i'm so upset that i missed it i'm so sorry they even did that ticket deal as well and i should have gone i mean the tickets were crazy expensive but that's why i got them for free <laughs> that's because no one invited me guys <laughs> to be fair today they're the, ticks they're the what's same. going on <laughs> we have the same producers for pretty woman so uh, i just all right I just messaged All right. <laughs> Okay, so now that we're coming to the end of this podcast, which mm. makes me so sad, I want to ask you some questions that we've been asked by our listeners. Amazing. Who is your idol or admire most and why? Okay, so there's a couple. My idol idol is Matthew McConaughey. Really? Yeah, I feel like that's a bit rogue, but... Very rogue. Him, I I remember watching him in, I think it was actually Wolf of Wall Street for the first time in like 2014. Mm-hmm. And being like, this dude, he's only in it for like 10 minutes and this dude's insane. And then like since then I've watched every film he's ever been in. So do you want to do that? Do yeah. you want to go into acting? Yeah, yeah, big time. Yeah. Really? That's like uh, my biggest passion outside of like performing is movies. Okay. Like, I watched just shy of 400 movies last year. Oh, wow. So yeah. you do your research. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big time. I, I I love it. And you know when you watch a film now, do you watch it just for the acting? Well, it's weird. Like, I did media studies and film studies at A-level. Okay. So like since then, I've not really been able to watch a movie without being like, oh, that's that or that's mm. whatever. Like, um, Well, that, that was great. But like camera angle from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at it from that perspective. It brings back horrible memories of writing essays about it. Um, okay. Um, but Trauma. no, I, lo- I love it and it's so like are you telling me one day we will see you in Hollywood I don't know Hollywood need to message me no <laughs> you have to put that out there into yeah, we the will. universe we will you have manifest to. I don't manifest you have to I but if you know in your heart of hearts that you will get there you will get there yeah no one like you have the face for it you have the height for it I didn't, re- I didn't know he was like 8 foot 10 <laughs> Uh, that's exactly correct. I'm eight <laughs> foot ten. I thought he was going to come in and be a little bit taller than me, but you have got height Everyone on you. Everyone says that actually. How Everyone tall are you? six foot three. Flipping hell! I know. Everyone goes. I thought you'd have been tiny. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Maybe t- like television makes you look taller normally, but I feel like how weird. I, I tell you what, a lot of the boys on the show were quite tall though as well. So maybe it made me look less less tall. tall but you've got the height, you've got the talent, you've Thank got the you. face. Yeah, I'd and love you've it. got the fresh. Teeth. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. What's your favourite audition song? Okay, easy answer. Falling by Harry Styles. That song, I think, has got me the majority of the jobs I've ever done. I sung that for my panto audition. I sung that for Strictly. I sung that for Mamma Mia. Oh and my I wanted gosh. to do it on the show, but Stefan Marcellus did it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that's the one that I will you give you a little, little 
sneak peek here. They put it in the show because I sung it in my audition. There we go, an exclusive. It. Also, I sung the Lewis Capaldi song, so I couldn't do Falling because it was too similar. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. And what about an MT song? If I'm probably going This World Will Remember Me from Bonnie and Clyde. Really? Yeah. I love that song. It's a good one. Have you ever sung anything from Back to the Future? Well, I sing The Power of Love. Do you? Actually, but the, I say it's Huey Lewis. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, not Back to the Future. Yeah, I do that one. That's it. What about anything from Evan Hansen? Is it not you? No, I no. I never see myself as an Evan, so I just don't sing it. Really? Yeah, I'm too but tall got, for Evan. No, I know, but you've got the voice for the song. Yeah, true. They are beautiful songs yeah. as well. Also ben, the, ben Joyce sings it in the shower every day. I can't get away from it. The drum? All of them. Does he? Yeah. How funny. Yeah. They are beautiful. Because he, he just enjoys singing them. Yeah, fair enough. What's your favourite Sky costume? It's probably the going away outfit, like the cargoes. Cargoes at the end. Yeah, yeah. The white tees, the Tims. The, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that's a groovy outfit. I like that. You would wear that to freedom? Happily. <laughs> Happily. <laughs> if you ever go to Freedom in this outfit, we must have... I'll send evidence. you a photo. <laughs> we had a pre-show ritual, so I'd love to know what your post-show routine is. My post-show routine is... I, tell you, I have to preset my pre-show ritual. I have to get my AC on. because oh, really? Because you sweat in? Yeah. And my room is... My dressing room is quite small. Like It's quite compact. We call it the Harry Potter cupboard. Okay. Um, And... There's like a pipe that runs above it, so it gets really hot. Oh. And if I come off after the finale, after like 10 minutes and I'm sweating and I don't turn that AC on, I will be dead I've on the a, floor, a, a pile. A terrible, harsh reality coming your way. Oh, no. Summer. The lack of AC. Oh, the summer. Yeah, I know. Good luck. I know, thanks. I might invest in a fan. I, I, I would probably say contact Dyson. <laughs> Could we get him an ad? But I actually really don't have one for post-show. Actually, no, I tell a lie. I will always take a Jakeman's with me. Will you? So that's I'll, a post-show thing. I'll pop a Jakeman's after stage door, yeah. I'm a Jakesman in the interval, girl. Oh, yeah. Or a gin gin. Have you ever tried a gin gin? The gin gin chews. Yeah, I have. Protein protein shake during the interval. A little clear way. And then Jakeman's at the end. When I did bring it on, if I didn't have a gin gin at the start of Act 1, I generally didn't think I'd be able to sing it. I... Know exactly what you mean. There are some things I used to do, and I was like, I have to do this before the show, otherwise this show is going to go awfully. I'm going to crack everyone. And the light's going to fall and hit me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, from the rig, <laughs> Toby, I've got to say this has probably been my favourite episode we've filmed. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Bye, guys. Bye.